Over the years, I've helped a lot of people learn Power Automate and troubleshoot Power Automate. Right? Those cloud flows are kind of crazy. So what I want to do today is just run through a video of the common questions and answers that I give, right? So talk about things like pagination and run after and terminate and the 90 second timeout and some of those common errors that Power Apps gets and responding to Power Apps. So this video is just a bunch of little things about Power Automate that people are looking for that'll make you better at building them. Sound like fun? Then let's just switch over to my desktop and take a look. First up, let's look at this archive flow. So this is one that we run into a lot, right? So this one's got a reoccurrence. So it runs once every Monday to check for all the items that need to be archived, right? And the way they do that is they do it with a get items over here. So, you know, I've got an anim or filter query here and they're just hitting up a SharePoint list, right? OData query. So there's a video up there if you've never done archiving like this before. But one of the problems we run into here is that people are like, hey, I had a thousand items that need archive, right? We had a big month and I needed to archive a thousand, but this one only ever grabs a hundred. So it turns out that most, if not all the get items, so whether it's with SharePoint, Dataverse, SQL, uh, Salesforce, it doesn't matter, all those get items by default for the most part grab only a hundred items at a time. And most people, A, don't know that, and B, if they run into it, they don't know how to fix it. So they just keep running the flow over and over again until it gets them all a hundred a point. So one of the things you can do is you can turn on pagination. So in the get items, if you go here to settings, and if you look, there is under networking pagination. So it's off by default. If you change this to on, now you can change the threshold. And so if we change this from 100, which is its default, to 5,000, now what it'll do is it will get up to 5,000 items and it'll get them in chunks of 100. So it'll get 100, 200, 300, et cetera, until it's gotten all 5,000. Okay, so anytime that you're doing a get items and you're gonna have more than 100 items, once again, with all the data sources, this is not just SharePoint specific, you're gonna to wanna to make sure you check out pagination. Right? And if we try to increase it to 50,000, it's fine. If you go to 500,000, it's going to tell you that right now the pagination limit there is 100,000 items. And there's different limits there depending on your data source and your licensing, how many API calls you make. Like That's a more complicated question. What I want to introduce you here was this idea of pagination, right? So now when you go and do it, instead of just getting 100 like it would when it was off, it will get up to that limit with uh, in chunks of 100, right? It'll always be chunks of 100. So that's an important thing to understand. Secondly here, so say that you were trying to work on this flow and you're like, well, you know, I want to practice getting items to see if Shane was right, but I know I've got a compose right here that does the length, it tells me how many records we got, that's a great troubleshooting step. But then if he gets back a hundred at a time, then I got to wait on this to run, right? So we want to fail fast when it comes to flow. And so in this case, all we're trying to do is figure out, did what Shane teach us fix get items? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go right here after the compose, I'm going to add an action and I'm gonna add an action called terminate. This is one we do not see people use enough, right? Terminate right here. So what this is, is a way to stop your flow in its track. Say, hey flow, you're all done. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change this terminate to succeeded. Now that we've done this, when the flow runs, right, it'll we'll manually trigger it, it'll get the items, it'll run the compose to tell me how many we got back, and then it'll terminate. So then we don't have to wait on this loop. And when we're done testing, we just delete the terminate and we're in business, right? So let's try that real quick. So we'll go ahead and get items, settings, we'll set our pagination and we'll just set our pagination to uh, 500, right? So then now we'll say save and then we'll do a test. We'll manually test it. We'll hit test down here, run the flow and finally done. Jeez, old Pete's. Okay, so look, our flow is running. And so look, it took about seven seconds, composed zero, zero, and then this was skipped, right? Because the terminate stopped the flow. The flow ran successfully because the terminate said it did. But what we're really after to go to compose and look at that, we got 500 items. So instead of getting 100, we got 500. And so now you can change the limit. So there you go, two tips in one. How fun is that? Okay, so one other one I wanna show you here that almost no one uses. So this is the flow that we use here at powerapps901.com, right? Through our homepage, people fill out a contact form. We get thousands of those requests a year. And then we process through, right? Respond to those free help requests, training requests, consulting, et cetera, okay? So this is a very large flow that does this. This is the biggest flow I know of. And so one of the things in here that I do though, to help with it, right? Because it's a unnatural process, right? We're counting on people filling out a contact form and people find ways to break things, right? So one of the things I need to do in this flow was build some error handling into it. And so the way that we do that in this particular flow is we're going to use configure run after. When someone fills out the form, the first thing we do is we send them an email with options and basically ask them, hey, do you want to subscribe to our mailing list? And so, you know, people click yes, no, like tens of thousands of people have clicked yes. Appreciate that. Remember with flow, a flow can only run for 30 days, right? So when you send an email with options, 
it sends out this email and there's two buttons there. Do you want to subscribe? Yes or no. And if they click yes, boom, the flow keeps going. If they click no, the flow keeps going. But if they don't click anything, the flow just sits there and waits for 30 days until it times out. So when it times out, your flow will fail. And if you don't have error handling. And so we don't want it to be failing all the time because then Microsoft will automatically turn it off. So what we've done is if you look down here, you see my little terminate friend again, right? Terminate canceled. But you notice the little red arrows there. Okay, the red arrows there, what that is telling you, if you click on configure run after for terminate three, there's something in here called, uh, you know, wouldn't should it run after? And so you can see that this action only runs if send email with options times out. So if you look at a default one right here, let's go back to this one. And if you say configure run after, you'd see that the normal setup is that when you add an action, it just says, hey, if that one's successful, I'm going to run, right? So that's how they all run. And that's why if one fails, times out, whatever, your flow breaks because it's not set up to handle that. So what we did here was we said, hey, terminate three, if this times out, so they didn't click yes or no, it just timed out over time. If it times out, then this step should run, right? So it has timed out and this step would cancel the flow. Now the flow ends in a cancel state and Microsoft's not mad at us. It's not a failure all the time. Now you notice the step after it also has the red arrow. That's because if someone clicks, yes, they want to be a member of our newsletter, please. Then what you're going to see is that this step would be skipped, right? Because this step would only run if that timed out. That didn't time out. That was successful. So if you go to condition three and do a uh, configure run after here, look, it only runs if terminate three is skipped. Terminate three is skipped if send email with options is successful. So we have this multi-step layering logic all throughout this flow. And this is often how we will build in notifications, right? Or we'll build in error handling, right? In this case, if it times out because of this, I don't care, right? Like it, they just chose not to press the button. I get that. But if you go down here a little further, so this is where I parse out the first name. And so here you can see that if get first name fails, right? So if we look here, configure run after, if it fails, because for whatever reason, we didn't get a good first name. Lots of weird stuff happens with internet forms. Then I send me an email notification that says fix it uh, with first name failed. Then look, this one's gray. So then it would terminate. So I'm adding error notifications in there and then marking as succeeded. If this one is skipped, then get last name runs and we kind of have the same type of logic in there. So just keep that in mind, right? This is a great way to build error handling. Maybe I should make a video that just talks about flow error handling. Hmm, I don't know. If you think that's a good idea, leave a comment. And while you're down there looking and reading that comment, make sure you subscribe and like the video. You know the deal. So anyway, that's another one I want you guys to understand. Using configure run after is a great way to add logic to handle when you have timeouts, failures, or successes. Next up, hey, are you enjoying all this? I've got a lot more of this type of tips and tricks on Flow. You just need to go sign up for my Power Apps and Power Automate 201 class, right? It's available live or on demand. And in there is just tons of Power Automate content, tips, tricks, little things you need to know to build better stuff. Sound fun? Then go check it out. Let's switch over here to Power Apps and talk a little about Power Apps and Power Automate and how they generate some, some chaos between the two. Okay, so this is one I've done also. I'll put a link up there, right? This is my upload video, world famous upload video. You know who invented Power Apps uploads years ago? This guy right here, like back in 2018. I don't even know, a long time ago. Anyway, don't care. Okay, so we, if you've ever seen that video, you know that the way that it works, right? We grab the file, we do new upload run, right? So that's a flow that we have and we pass it the file and the file name and then it creates it. One of the things we want to talk about here is uh, troubleshooting and a little bit of, you know, error hand, or a little bit of extra, you know, a little extra sauce sometimes people ask me for. If we edit that flow right here, right? And we'll say edit, right? It's very simple, right? So we have Power Apps V2, we're getting a input called my file and then we are saying create the file. Okay, now the first thing I want to add for you here is what if I wanted to put this into a folder, right? So one of the things you could do is just go here and say add an input text and we'll call it my folder because I'm super creative, my folder. And then down here under share documents, we'll just do a slash. And then you can actually here just add dynamic content for my folder. And so now what will happen is it will, whatever they pass from Power Apps will go here. And if it is a folder that exists, it will create or will use the existing folder. If the folder doesn't exist, then it will automatically create the folder and then put the file in there, right? Like, so you don't have to go through the whole create folder process. 
you just add it in there to the URL and it's like, oh, I'll make a folder for you. So I can put the file there, right? That's kind of cool. Now, one of the things that, right, so we do this. So we're like, all right, cool. We want to try this out. So we're going to hit save, all right? Now it's saved. We will close out of here. Now, when you come back over here, it's going to load, right? It's going to refresh itself, right? This is one of the nice things they've added over the years. It used to be in the old days, you had to know to hit refresh, kind of annoying. Okay, now that it's uploaded and refreshed, if you go up here, you're going to first see you have an error. And so if we look in here, it is going to be like, hey, I'm looking for something different, right? It, it's confused right now. Sometimes this will manifest itself as like, hey, I, you gave me one thing, I'm looking for two, or I, you gave me two, I'm looking for one. Right? This error message shows up different ways. But what we're really after here is you can see that it's like, hey, the first thing that it wanted now is my folder. Like It's having a hard time telling us that. But if we go right here and we'll just say, crazy cow folder, right? I don't know, like it literally doesn't matter. And then we put a comma, now it's happy. So keep that in mind. When you change the number of inputs in the flow, Power Apps will break, but Power Apps sometimes does a good job of telling you what it wanted. Sometimes it does a bad job. In this case, it even reordered them. I don't know why, like, ugh. But just keep that in mind. If, if when you make the change, just rewrite the whole formula if you have to. Like walk through it using the little, you know, the commas, right? It tells you run wants text, comma, file record because our two inputs are the text, the folder name, and the file record. But now if we take and press the button, right? So we'll say play, we will upload a file. We'll go over here on my uh, thing here and grab a great picture of Buddy. There you go, Buddy took a long nap on me the other day, wouldn't let me up, right? So we'll say open that one. And so we know that the upload is happening behind the scenes. And now our upload is complete. We can say, okay. And if we go look over in SharePoint, if we go to documents, look, now there is a crazy cow folder. It, it is a new folder. I should have showed you it wasn't there before, but you can see the new symbol, you know it's not there. And if we look in there, there is our file. And then there is a picture of me and buddy, yay! Who doesn't love that? Keep that in mind, like you can pass in. So you could then go back to your Power App. I could add a text input that says, Make up a folder name, right? And pass that in. It doesn't care, it just wants text. It's going to make that folder name. Okay, now the other tip here is let's go back to our flow. So let's go edit it again. All right, so finding that was hard. So a lot of times you guys wanna to respond to Power Apps. You wanna say, hey, Power Apps, here's the, the thing that I just created. Here's the link, here's the whatever, right? So you're gonna go here, add a new step. And then here we're going to search for respond. All right, so there's Power Apps. Respond to Power App or Flow. And so now we just the same kind of way we use this V2, we had to add inputs. We click here and add an output. We'll just do text. I'll do a file link. And then right here, if we look in the from the create file, if we search for, oh, not link, we want, I think it's called path. There it is, we want path. So that will return the path of the file. So where it just put it, what, what that is. So then once again, we're going to say save. Also while this is saving, remember like, it's switching you between the V1 Power Automate and the V2. Like, I don't, I have no explanation for you why they kind of make you use one or the other sometimes. So, you know, the steps look a little bit different in the V2 experience, but the, the technical concepts are exactly the same. So if you're doing it and it looks different, it's okay. And I'll even, I'll put a link up there to the video. It kind of explains the difference between the two, but I don't think it should have missed you guys up, but I just want to throw it out there. Okay, so let's close this. Wait on this to refresh one second. Okay, so now that it's done refreshing, if you go back over here, okay, so we've got the, we've told it to respond. So the way the response comes back, if you look at new upload run, right, there's the parenthesis to open it, there's a parenthesis to close it. If you go to the end of it and do a dot, look, dot file link. So it knows about that now, right? Because we refreshed, it knows it's there. So if we wanted to capture that, we would want to do something like set, var fl for file link and then close that right so we're just putting it into a variable so the flow will return it but the only way you get it is if you you got to grab it and put in a variable at the same time right so you just wrap your flow there in that but now that we've done that if we then go here and we'll just insert ourselves a label on the screen right so right there and oh, i'll probably make it even bigger Woo. So now if we say play, let's add another file we'll add um this one the pause upload complete Oh, you know what I forgot to do? I forgot to change the label to say var fl. But look, so now it returns shared documents, crazy cow folder, and then the file name. And then of course, because we know that we really want this whole thing, right? I'd go back over here and grab 
the front of the URL because that part's never going to change, right? The SharePoint URL is not changing. And so we could just throw that in there. Amber saying, right? So boom, 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 boom. There's the URL. Oh, what? You want to make it go straight to that URL? That's fair. So then maybe we'll go right here and we'll say on select, we'll say launch self.text, right? So whatever the text is there, which is a variable, launch it. Um, we'll change it. We'll do a little underline here. We'll make the color blue. Like we'll make it look like a hyperlink, right? That's not very good. Well, you get the idea. We'll make it an orange hyperlink. Okay. Anyway, so if we hit play, so now if we click on this, boop, it will open a window straight to Buddy's paws. His paws are about as big as my hands. I have small hands though. So anyway, so that's another one. One more thing I want you to consider with um, Power Apps and Power Automate that's not very well documented, but so right now, like if we go back and look at this flow again, one more time, I'm not gonna edit it, but I wanna, I wanna show you, I wanna talk about something here. If you have a flow that responds to Power Apps, like we just did here, okay? You, when you click go, right? So when it gets triggered from Power Apps, you have 90 seconds, 90 seconds for that to finish, right? Or it will time out. So Power Apps will only wait 90 seconds on flow. In the case of creating this file, it takes like four seconds or two seconds or one second, never gonna be a problem. But if you have a lot of complexity between these two here, and there is a chance that you're going to overrun the 90 seconds, you need to think of a different approach, right? This will not work for you because if you hit 91 seconds, then the flow keeps running. The flow will do its job, but Power Apps will throw an error because it's like, ah, it didn't finish. I don't know what to do. And so then you got to like start figuring out like how to solve that. And you don't want to. So anytime I've ran into this with a customer, what I've always done is said, oh, if it's a flow that's going to run that long, instead of it responding to Power Apps, like, so one of my customers, we built this big giant PDF document for them in here, um, you know, like hundreds of pages. So instead of trying to respond with a link to Power Apps, which would time out sometimes, we changed the process. So there was no respond here. At the end, it just emailed them a link to the, the document, right? And so in Power Apps, when I pressed the button, the little pop-up said, you know, this has been submitted, you'll get an email within the next five minutes with a link to your new PDF. Okay. So sometimes you have to think through that, but that 90 seconds things, like it doesn't seem like a big deal until it bites you. And then you have to like re rethink your solution. So that's what I've got for today. Just a bunch of common things, right? Like these are the type of things that we've ran into over the years, uh, between the videos, the training classes, our consulting customers, Hopefully just little tips that'll help you to make better flows, be faster at it, and be less frustrated. Let's face it, flow is frustrating. Flow is amazing. I love flow, don't get me wrong, but building in flow is frustrating, and so those tips should help you. So thoughts, comments, ideas for future videos, leave them below. I'm all ears. And with that, I'm going to say thanks and have a great day.